What does it cost to live in South Lake, Texas? If you're considering a move here to the Dallas Fort Worth area and you have your eye on South Lake, we want to get into a little bit more of what it costs to live there, what the cost of homes are, and what some of the things in South Lake have to offer so that you can be prepared for what you may be needing to spend. What's up everybody? I'm Kristen Carpentier with the Living in Dallas team located right here in the North Texas area. And if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about what it's like to eat, sleep, live, work, play, or buy real estate here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. Hit that little bell for notifications. That way every single week when we're dropping new content, you'll be the first to know. I am a licensed realtor here in the Dallas Fort Worth area and my team and I are getting calls, texts, and emails every single day from people just like you wanting to make that move here. So whether you're moving next week, next month, or even next year, don't hesitate to reach out. Give us a call, shoot us a text, email us, let us set up a Zoom call so that we can get to know one another a little bit better. And let's figure out how to help you make that move, smooth move here to the Dallas Fort Worth area. All right. So today we want to talk about the cost of living in South Lake, just because the price point is a little, you know, maybe a little bit higher than some of these other cities in and around the Dallas Fort Worth area. So first up, the cost of a home in South Lake. Right now, as of the middle of 2022, the median home price in South Lake is $1.2 million. So on the higher side of what homes cost around here, you can find a couple, like there's a, there are a few homes for sale in the upper $400,000 range. You can find them in the eight, nine hundred thousand dollar range, for instance. But typically in South Lake, if you're finding a home that's that good of a deal, I guess you could say, it's because it's older. It needs a lot of updating. It's just there's a lot that you might need to do to that house. But even in the eight, nine hundred thousand dollar range, it's not that you can't find a home with some good bones. But maybe the home really doesn't have that much land. It's not on that big of a lot. It still needs the updating and maybe it's just not in one of those newer neighborhoods. So yes, you can find homes below a million, but really people are moving to South Lake because of the communities, because of these beautiful neighborhoods and because of the school district. So typically if you're moving to South Lake with your family, you want a big, beautiful home or you can afford the big, beautiful home and you really want your kids to have that opportunity going to the South Lake schools. So it just really is a whole lot of community pride out there and they know they have a decent hefty budget being able to afford a home in South Lake. And that median home price may be $1.2 million, but you can find homes, multiple homes in the two to $4 million range, seven, $8 million range. And currently there is actually a home listed in South Lake for $24.5 million. It's called the Sunshine Estate. And if you want to Google that, you can find beautiful videos on that property. So something to check out if you want to look at some beautiful homes in South Lake. But yes, there are beautiful roads that you drive up and down and see a lot of these beautiful estates. When we moved here to Texas, we love seeing the difference in homes out here. People do lots of stonework and brickwork. And now that a lot of these homes that are being built here in Texas, you are getting a lot more of those modern looks to some of these homes as well. But in South Lake, if you're moving there and you want a new build, you're really not gonna find any new build communities. You can find a few like little pockets where people are building some new build homes, but typically those are custom. Currently right now, there are two new builds being offered up for sale and they're 2.4 and $3.5 million. They are in a very small exclusive gated community and they are on over half an acre, which is another good value of moving to South Lake. Some of these bigger, beautiful homes, you actually have a lot more room to spread out. Like I've always said in multiple videos, we love the trees here in Texas and South Lake is no exception. There's beautiful tree lined streets and people really truly take very good care of their homes. But people are moving to South Lake, frankly, because they can afford a little bit higher of a price point. And there really are no apartments in the city of South Lake. 
So rentals are very low. You can find a few short-term rentals. You can find a few homes for lease. And even leasing a home in South Lake, you're looking at anywhere from $2,800 upwards of, you could even spend $10,000 a month on a beautiful five, 6,000 square foot home. So they do have those options in South Lake, but rentals for the most part are quite low. Most people actually own their own home in South Lake. Speaking of owning your own home, and let's get into what we all love to talk about here in the great state of Texas are our property taxes. And yes, we complain about it all the time, how high our property taxes are. If you're going to move to South Lake and get a much more expensive home, you're actually going to pay a lot more in property taxes. That's just how it is. Our property taxes are based on the value of our homes. Thinking about moving to South Lake and you have, let's say, a million dollar property. Let's just keep our numbers quite simple for you because sometimes they need to be simple for me. But a million dollar property here in Texas, if it is your primary residence, you can have a 20% discount on your property taxes because of filing for a homestead exemption. So when you file for a homestead exemption here in Texas and you get the 20% discount, you're only having to pay the property taxes on $800,000. And currently in the South Lake market, if you're paying property taxes of a property valued at $800,000, you're looking at close to $18,000 per year on your property taxes. And when we moved here from Arizona, that was a huge shock. People told us you're going to pay more in property taxes. Texas property taxes are so high, but having owned our own home in Arizona for 11 years and realizing we were moving to Texas and it was pretty much about the same size, same cost of home. When we first moved here, that first property tax bill, it was a shock. So as home values have gone up and our property taxes go up, that's a big difference here. But in South Lake, just because you're buying a home for over a million dollars, that sticker shock could get something that people work into their mortgage payment. They know what to prepare for because you just might not be able to own the same size or cost of home that you could where you came from. But also, if you've come from some of these other states that do have high property taxes, California, New York, or anywhere in between, and if you already are used to those high property taxes, it's not a huge shock for you but you do get to file that 20% homestead exemption here in Texas. It's something to think about, our high property taxes, something to be prepared for when you move here. But also when you move to South Lake, we are going to have just like a whole lot of other communities, there's gonna be a lot of these neighborhoods that have HOA dues. And if you're moving to South Lake and you're thinking you're moving into a great neighborhood that has maybe $2,000 HOA dues, it doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a whole lot for that monthly HOA fee that you're having to pay. There are a couple of communities in South Lake where you do have the clubhouse and you do have the community swimming pool and tennis courts and things like that. But also if you're going to move in some of these very exclusive neighborhoods like Saddleback Ridge, for instance, it's a gated custom community where the homes are valued well over a million dollars and their HOA fees are $3,500 for the year. But What are you getting for those fees? Pretty much a gate and some landscape maintenance. So they're not offering all of those amenities that some of these HOAs are offering when you think of paying those higher dues. There are some around there and there's actually quite a few areas where you're not even having to pay for those HOA fees. Some of the older neighborhoods don't have HOAs in them, but also if you're building a big custom home, if you do want to move over there, and have this big, beautiful house. It's like a custom property on a custom lot. And so you're not part of an HOA, so you actually don't have those HOA dues. Something to think about where, what are you, what is it you're looking for in an HOA? And if you're just hoping that it's gonna make sure everybody keeps their yards nice and you're not gonna have a whole bunch of extra cars parked out on the street, moving into an HOA can be a bonus for a lot of people, just knowing that they're going to make sure that the neighborhood is kept up and things aren't going to fall in disrepair and just let trailers and boats and who knows what being parked all over. So something to be concerned of when you're moving into South Lake and your HOA fees. In the city of South Lake, they also have one country club called the Timurong Country Club. It does have a beautiful 18 hole golf course They do have a beautiful event space and bar and grill and places that you can go hang out with friends. They have a tennis center and a swimming pool. So if you really want to be part of, like I said, being in a country club atmosphere, they do have that there in South Lake. Maybe you don't necessarily need everything that the country club has to offer and you just want a great community center 
to be involved in. That is something that we have found here in Texas. Most of these cities and areas around have these great community centers that you can join. And South Lake actually has their own, but it really is probably a step up from some of the ones that we have seen. It's called the Champions Club at the Mark, and they do have an amazing fitness facility indoors with tons of fitness classes and fitness equipment. They also have an indoor turf and an outdoor turf, an indoor pool with multiple, with I think two, water slides. They have an outdoor splash pad for the little kids, but also cabanas you can rent if you wanna sit and plan a party and go hang out outdoors. They also have event space you can rent, but just it's a big, beautiful, modern, updated community center that you can go and join. And the dues there, whether you're a senior citizen, whether you're an individual or a family, you can also get corporate memberships to join there as well. And they can start anywhere from $36 a month and only up to about $125 a month. And that includes your entire family being able to go and enjoy all of the facilities there. So something that is there to be offered for everybody and just a great community center where you can take your kids, meet up with friends, and just enjoy those types of things right there in the heart of South Lake. But maybe you don't have a bunch of kids or you don't think that you're going to use all those facilities. South Lake also does have a lot of fitness opportunities. Whether you want to just join a 24-hour fitness or you want to join the F45 gym or Orange Theory, they have multiple options all throughout South Lake that you can join as well. And let's get into the cost of sports. Here in Texas, we quickly realized when we moved here with four kids times everything by four, that was a something to get used to. Sports and activities for your kids are a huge deal here. And South Lake, you can join the local city league sports, whether it's for soccer or football or lacrosse. We do actually love that when we moved here to Texas, there is every single sport that you can find. You can find them for club sports and a lot of options in through a lot of these schools. So in South Lake, you can join your city leagues, but you can also work your way up into the high school programs. Here in Texas, we also learned rather quickly that if you're going to progress in through high school, you are going to need to truly focus in on if you absolutely love soccer, if you are absolutely gung-ho in cheerleading or football, and you join the club teams to be able to do that because you want that extra practice. You want that extra exposure and experience to be able to get that much better in your sports because to make these sports teams here in these high schools, they are highly competitive and you need to be prepared. So getting your kids into sports in high school is also another expense that you need to be prepared for. When our daughter first went into high school, she actually made the high school cheerleading team. And granted, we thought it was fun. They borrowed a uniform. That was quickly $1,500 for the year to join cheer, but it did include her shoes and her hair bows, lots and lots of t-shirts, her backpack, and the use of their uniforms. But it also made sure that it went to food before games and different opportunities that these girls were participating in for the school. But then our boys came up and entered high school and they were in track. And the track dues were only $250 for the season. Really just included the uniform and snacks at some of these track meets. So a huge range. Then we had friends who you join the baseball team and you join the football team and their dues and their dues are quite a bit more. So just depending on which sport you are in high school, it you have to be prepared for those fees. And even when you start going to their games in middle school, so from middle school and high school, you actually have to pay to watch your kid play every single sport, it seems, here in the high schools. You have to go to watch your kids in the track meets. You have to go watch your kids in your middle school basketball games. On Friday nights, you pay $10 per person to get into the high school football game. A lot cheaper for the students to go, typically $5 per game because they're a student. Everybody's having to pay to go to these football games, these baseball games, soccer, basketball, and volleyball and everything in between. So another cost of when you're moving there, and especially we learned here in Texas, everybody goes to these football games. People go tailgating, people go support their friends' kids, and going spending $10 to go watch a football game, not that big of a deal compared to a lot of other expenses. But when you get into the club side of things and you're off season, it seemed cheer went all year long. They do competitive cheer, they're doing competitions all the time, and those expenses can get 
quite high. It's not just your typical $200 a month for practice. It ends up turning into travel expenses and hotel expenses and food expenses based on where you're going. But then your kids get off season on soccer or baseball and they're playing club sports. And back when our daughter was young and she first started doing club volleyball, it was $1,500 for the season. But then we learned that some of the friends were in these highly competitive teams and they were traveling on top of it. And they're paying $5,800 just for the one volleyball season. Granted, it could last six, seven months and they could go to nationals and then have to pay for that on top of it. But just for the season, counting all their uniforms, all their practice times, it can get very expensive based on how high your kids are in these sports. And there's a big range based on what sport your kids are playing, but sports here in Texas seem to be quite a bit more than when we moved from Arizona. We Back in the day, we were asking our friends what they were having to pay, and it was significantly less than what we were paying here in Texas. So sports, if you have multiple kids and your kids want to be prepared for college sports and they and you need to sign them up and send them to our friends who are doing football camps all summer long so that their kids can be prepared for college sports next year and hopefully get a scholarship to play. Well, their kids, they're paying for all of these camps all summer long where they go to these colleges and they get to be coached by some of these college coaches and just get to be noticed. You're paying hefty expenses and being able to afford your kids to have these opportunities. So here in Texas with kids and families, you're going to be paying a lot more and needing to budget that in to pay for your kids sports opportunities. But say you move here and you have little kids and you need daycare, you need somebody to watch them after school and you need preschool options. South Lake does have some of those options. Just like in a lot of the other cities that we have learned when we moved here, they do have a couple options in some of these churches. So there's a great big church in South Lake as well that offers an amazing preschool program, but they do also offer the private school, infant care, preschool, and kindergarten care and after school care as well. So that could range anywhere from $200 a month based on how many hours you need or upwards of $1,000 a month if you're needing all day care, after school care, or whatever you might need for your kids. So there is a huge range of options there in the city of South Lake, but you can get as elite and as private school as you need. If you do truly love living in South Lake and of all of the things that South Lake has to offer, South Lake actually does have some great dining and shopping options too. There is not tons of what you would call a fine dining within the city of South Lake. A lot of people say that you have to travel outside the city a little bit more, maybe down into Dallas. But they do have a couple really nice restaurants. You have True Luck Seafood Grill and Kirby Steakhouse, just to name a couple of the higher end restaurant dining options in South Lake. But they also have tons of everyday options and low cost options. You can go to Brio or the Cheesecake Factory, multiple Mexican restaurants, pizza restaurants, and some of our favorites. And well, actually what our kids are always asking for is we have everything from Chipotle and Anamia's and Torchy's Tacos, just to name a few. South Lake does have tons of options. If you, so many great restaurants are going in there, there's truly something for everybody. In fact, we actually love going over to South Lake because of the amount of options that they have. They actually have a really good Costco, of course, but that's also where the nearest Trader Joe's is and Central Market and everything from, you know, Nordstrom Rack over to the Lululemon, Anthropology, Williams and Sonoma. There's even, an, well, there's also an Apple store and a Peloton store, as well as a Tesla showroom. So right there in the South Lake Town Square are tons of dining and shopping options, which just gives you a lot of opportunities to not really have to leave South Lake. You can get everything from a TJ Maxx and Home Goods to, to a Marshalls and an REI. So truly, if you need your one-stop shop and you don't want to leave South Lake that often or just order stuff in from Amazon, so many great areas right there in the South Lake community. You have the higher end and you also have just shopping for everyday people that want to come over to South Lake and just get shopping, go shopping and maybe eat out and meet friends for lunch. So we love South Lake. And yes, the cost of living is a little bit higher over there when you're thinking of the price point of homes. But other than the price point of homes and what's going on over in South Lake, there are a lot of great options no matter what you need to get your kids involved in, what whatever your families want to be involved in and shopping wise. 
So other than that, if you are looking for other opportunities outside of South Lake, if you're wanting to know, maybe you want a little bit more land, maybe you want something that isn't quite so busy, there are options all throughout the DFW Metroplex that we have been to, that we have researched, and we have helped clients get into. So if there's ever any questions that we can do to help answer what we can do to help you make that move here to the Dallas-Fort Worth area that much easier, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know what we can do to help you make that smooth move here to the Dallas area.